Dear friends, welcome to my video lecture on Conflict Theory Approach to Sociology of Education. It is in the first unit of Net Education or TRB Education. Most welcome to listen to my video. Thank you very much for your presence. Let us straight away enter into the topic. What is a Conflict Theory Approach to Sociology of Education? Conflict theory provides a critical framework for understanding social structures, inequalities and power dynamics. It was uh, pioneered by Karl Marx and has since been expanded by other sociologists like Max Weber and C. Wright Mills. In the context of education, conflict theory views schools as places where societal inequalities are perpetuated, reinforcing existing class structures, racial hierarchies and unequal power relations. What are the origins of conflict theory? Conflict theory originates from the works of Karl Marx who saw society as a battleground between the ruling class bourgeois and the working class proletariat. He argued that the ruling class maintains the power by controlling economic resources and the means of protection. This control also extends to ideologies and institutions, including education. In Marx's view, schools function to reproduce the labor force needed for a capitalist economy, training individuals to fit into predefined social and economic roles. Max Weber and other sociologists later expanded on Marx's ideas, highlighting not only economic factors but also status and power, uh, political power as critical to understanding social conflict. Weber's work underscored that education is also linked to cultural reproduction with the schools passing down dominant values and reinforcing the status quo. Status quo means uh, things as they are, as it exists. Basic tenets of conflict theory in education. Inequality in educational opportunities. Conflict theorists argue that education is not a neutral or equalizing force in society. Instead, it reinforces existing inequalities. Schools serve the interest of the dominant groups, typically those with more wealth and power, by providing better resources, higher quality teaching and more opportunities for advancement. So there is inequality in educational opportunities according to this conflict theory in education. Children from disadvantaged backgrounds are often given less access to quality education thereby limiting their uh, future opportunities and uh, reinforcing their subordinate status, subservient uh, status in other words. Cultural reproduction, another important uh, aspect uh, cultural theory, uh, conflict theory speaks about is cultural reproduction. It keeps the culture as it is without growing. Conflict theory is emphasized that education serves to reproduce the dominant culture particularly through what French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu calls cultural capital. Cultural capital refers to the non-financial assets that give individuals a social advantage such as language, education and cultural knowledge. Schools often reward students who possess the cultural capital of the dominant group, where students from marginalized communities are disadvantaged because their cultural backgrounds do not correspond to the expectations of the education system. In this way, schools act as the agents of cultural reproduction, preserving social hierarchies or social evils. There is hidden curriculum. There is a uh, conflict theory speaks about hidden curriculum. Conflict theories uh, also focus on the concept of the hidden curriculum, the implicit lessons that students learn in school, such as obedience, competition, and conformity. These lessons are not part of the formal curriculum, but are essential for maintaining social control. 
The academic curriculum teaches students to accept the status quo, preparing them for their future roles in a hierarchical society. For example, working class students may be taught to value manual labor and obedience, while upper class students are groomed for leadership and managerial positions. This ensures the reproduction of class divisions across generations. Control and surveillance. Schools are uh, seen as institutions that not only educate but also discipline and control, unnecessary control sometimes. Michael Foucault's ideas on power and surveillance are relevant here. He argues that modern institutions, including schools, are subtle forms of surveillance to control individuals. The structure of the school day, the monitoring of students' behavior, and the examination system all serve to enforce discipline and produce compliant citizens, obedient citizens, who fit into the demands of a capitalist society. Credentialism and meritocracy are other important concepts in conflict theory. Conflict theorists criticize the concept of meritocracy, the belief that success is based on individual ability and effort. For whom? Only the rich people who, who can afford for quality education. What about other marginalized poor students? You know? They cannot think of this uh, meritocracy without having the basic need. That is the idea here. Credentialism and meritocracy. In reality, according to this perspective, access to education and the achievement of credentials is heavily influenced by one's social background. For instance, students from wealthier families are more likely to attend prestigious schools, receive additional academic support, and have access to networks that can help them succeed. This means that educational qualifications often reflect existing social inequalities rather than a true meritocratic process. So, a meritocra meritocratic process is there, available in the educational system, but it favors only some students who can offer, maybe the rich students. What about the other uh, weak, poor, and the marginalized uh, sections of students. So that is the question conflict theory asks. Conflict theory and racial inequality in education. Racial inequality is another major focus within the conflict theory approach to education. Conflict theories argue that schools contribute to racial inequality by systematically disadvantaging minority students. This is often seen in the form of segregation both historically and in contemporary school systems. In many countries, including the United States, schools in predominantly minority areas tend to have fewer resources, lower quality facilities, and less experienced teachers than schools, schools in predominantly white or affluent areas. I hope you understood this. Especially in the United States, uh, schools for the minority areas uh, tend to be having very less resources, that is the idea. Whereas in the white and affluent areas, uh, all the schools have all the facilities and there is quality education catering to the needs of the rich students, that is the idea given here. This creates a cycle of disadvantage, this type of situation, creates a cycle of disadvantage, limiting educational attainment and reinforcing racial hierarchies. Moreover, conflict theories highlight the ways in which the curriculum reflects the dominant culture, often marginalizing the histories, perspectives, and contributions of minority groups. This can alienate minority students and contribute to higher dropout rates. In this way, schools help to maintain not only class inequality, but also racial inequality. So there is a fight between different class, fight between black and white people like that. No, that creates that type of uh, difference in the school education, creates uh, such kind of a rift between rich and poor, black and white people, uh, uh, between this class and that class people. No, that, that goes like this. Conflict theory and gender inequality in education. 
gender inequality in education is another area where conflict theory is highly relevant Uh, schools often reinforce the traditional gender role gender roles and expectations perpetuating gender disparities in both the education and the broader workforce i hope you understand this i mean a boy should do only these things a girl should do only these things you know that type of thing uh, a girl is not supposed to do what a boy is supposed to do you know like that no gender uh, stereotypes in other words For example, conflict theories point to how boys and girls are socialized differently in school, with the girls often encouraged to be passive and nurturing, while boys are encouraged to be assertive and competitive. This contributes to the gender division of labor, where women are often concentrated in lower paying and uh, lower status jobs. just because of the stereotyped uh, gender roles women are considered to be inferior and they are given low pay that is the idea uh, the conflict theory gives additionally conflict theorists argue that the education system often fails to address the specific needs of female students particularly in terms of providing support for balancing education with the domestic responsibilities this can limit their opportunities for advancement and reinforce the gender inequality in society what are the criticisms against uh, conflict theory in education while well, conflict theory provides a critical lens for understanding inequality in education it has also been criticized for being overly deterministic fatalistic critics argue that conflict theories tend to focus too much on how education reproduces social inequalities overlooking the ways in which education can serve as a pathway to upward mobility for the poor student there is no upward mobility uh, according to the present system of education this is what uh, conflict theory holds for example many individuals from disadvantaged backgrounds do succeed in overcoming structural barriers and achieving academic and professional success additionally conflict theory is often criticized for ignoring the agency of students and the teachers while schools may reproduce inequality they can also be sites of resistance where individual challenge dominant ideologies and work to create more equitable outcomes consequences so I, uh, again i repeat uh, why schools may reproduce inequality they can also be places of uh, they can be also places where individuals challenge dominant ideology and work to create more equitable outcomes so this is one of the criticism against the conflict theory even though the situation bad situation exists in the school system people can challenge it there is a possibility of challenging that the status quo and uh, you know the evils uh, prevalent in the school system when there is a, a chance for that uh, why do you say that uh, you know there is always a, a perpetuation of uh, injustice or uh, uh, unlawful ways in the school system or unhelpful uh, ways for the poor children why do you say like that uh, uh, critics, critics ask you know the critical theorist okay they are uh, asking critical theorists with these questions right what are the implications of educational reform the conflict theory approach to education has uh, important implications for educational reform if education systems are to address the inequalities highlighted by conflict theorists reforms need to focus on reducing disparities in resources ensuring access to quality education for all students and creating more inclusive curricula syllabus that reflect the diverse backgrounds of students again i repeat if education systems are to address the inequalities highlighted by conflict theories reforms need to focus on reducing disparities in resources ensuring access to quality education for all students and creating more inclusive curricula that reflect the diverse backgrounds of students efforts to increase the funding for schools in disadvantaged areas reduce the class sizes and provide additional support services for marginalized poor students 
can help to address some of the inequalities identified by conflict theorist so according to you know the, these people the people who uh, you know uh, prefer educational reform it is possible to change the status quo you know by giving more funds to such schools etc you know that is the idea given here we can reduce the class size and additionally we can give additional support services so that you know the gap you know doesn't widen between the rich and the poor student that is the idea given here additionally challenging the hidden curriculum by promoting critical thinking creativity and social justice in the classroom can empower students to question and resist the social inequalities the teachers can you know indulge in certain type of reflections for the students that uh, helps them to critically evaluate the system itself perhaps you know that is the idea given here challenging the hidden curriculum by promoting critical thinking creativity and social justice why this should be kept in the school why this practice is kept in the school why it cannot be ruled like that the critical thinking can go on in such a school system then <coughs> this hidden curriculum students will understand even throw it away and then they will uh, grow in the proper way that is the idea given here as concluding remarks so what can we say in summary the conflict theory approach to the sociology of education emphasizes how schools function as tools for the reproduction of social inequalities by reinforcing class race and gender hierarchies the education system has to maintain existing power structures however schools can also be places of resistance uh, sites of resistance or places uh, you know uh, and the chain places of chain and efforts to reform the education system must focus on reducing disparities and promoting equality for all students so schools can also be sites of resistance and chain and efforts to reform the education system must focus on reducing disparities and promoting equality for all students understanding education through the lens of conflict theory provides a critical perspective on the role that schools play in shaping society and maintaining social order let us analyze some of the important questions related to this topic conflict theory approach in sociology of education who is considered the pioneer of conflict theory max weber emily durkheim karl marx herbert spencer that is a uh, karl marx karl marx is widely recognized as the founder of conflict theory which focuses on class struggles and power dynamics in society especially in education also according to the conflict theory what do schools primarily function uh, to do what primary function it should have in other words promote social equality reproduce existing class structures encourage creativity and critical thinking provide free education for all what is the answer for this uh, what should schools do uh, according to the conflict theory that is a reproduce existing class structures reproduce existing class structures conflict is argue that schools reinforce social hierarchies social hierarchies and reproduce existing sorry conflict is argue that schools reinforce social hierarchies and reproduce existing class structures structures by providing unequal opportunities based on social background what concept developed by pierre bourdieu refers to non financial assets that give individuals social advantages social capital economic capital cultural capital human capital so what concept is this pierre bourdieu uh, refers to uh, non financial assets that give individuals social advantages that is cultural capital <clears throat> cultural capital includes knowledge education knowledge education and other non financial resources 
that provides social advantages and it is central to how schools reproduce inequalities. What term describes the implicit lessons about obedience, competition and conformity taught in schools? Formal curriculum, hidden curriculum, social curriculum, democratic curriculum. So hidden curriculum, the hidden curriculum only uh, you know, uh, you know, gives this type of capital uh, knowledge. In other words, uh, you know, the capital, uh, uh, cultural capital aspects. That is, indirectly, it infuses into the minds of the student certain practices and habits. Sometimes it may be harmful to the marginalized students. That is the idea here. What term describes implicit lessons about obedience, competition, and conformity taught in school? That is hidden curriculum. Hidden curriculum refers to the informal and uh, unintended lessons that students learn in school, such as conformity and acceptance of social hierarchies. According to conflict theory, schools are seen as institutions that not only educate but also empower students discipline and control individuals, uh, encourage innovation, create social harmony. So according to conflict theory, schools are seen as institutions not only educate but also discipline and control individuals. In a particular way, they are groomed. You know, that is the idea here. Discipline and control individuals. Sometimes it is a slightest education. That is the point uh, conflict theory makes. Conflict theory is including uh, Michael Foucault, uh, emphasize that schools use a subtle forms of surveillance and control to maintain social order. What does the concept of meritocracy imply in education? Success is based on wealth. Success is based on individual ability and effort. Success is inherited. Success depends on cultural background. What does the concept of meritocracy imply in education. Success is based on individual ability and effort. Meritocracy suggests that achievement is based on merit such as personal effort and ability. Though conflict theorists argue this is often a myth. <coughs> conflict theorists argue <coughs> that in reality educational qualifications reflect a true meritocratic success. Educational qualifications are mostly influenced by social background. Educational qualifications are irrelevant to career success. Educational qualifications are uniformly accessible to all. So conflict theorists argue that in reality, educational qualifications are mostly influenced by social background. Conflict theory asserts that social background significantly affects educational access and success undermining the idea of meritocracy. So conflict doesn't believe in meritocracy. That is the idea given here. According to conflict theory, how do schools uh, contribute to educational inequality? By encouraging culture and diversity, by providing equal opportunities, by systematically disadvantaging minority students, by implementing strict rules. So, by systematically advantaging minority students, uh, you know, schools contribute to racial inequality in our country, uh, casteistic differences, you know, inequality among castes, you know, that we can say, uh, in, 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 according to Indian situation. Uh, conflict is argued that schools often have fewer resources and opportunities for minority students perpetuating racial or caste inequalities. Which of the following is not a tenet of conflict theory, conflict theory in education? Not a principle. No, which of the following is not a principle of conflict theory in education? Inequality in educational opportunities, cultural reproduction, elimination of social hierarchies, hidden curriculum. So elimination of social hierarchies, that is the answer. It is not a principle of conflict theory in education, elimination of social hierarchies. Conflict theory emphasizes how education reinforces rather than eliminates social hierarchies. So this is not a principle of conflict theory in education, elimination of social hierarchies. 
Conflict area first assesses how education reinforces rather than eliminates social hierarchies. What is the term credentialism referred to in education? The focus on obtaining educational qualification. The emphasis on critical thinking skills. The removal of class distinctions. The promotion of hands-on learning. What is the term credentialism? refer to in education that is the focus on obtaining educational qualifications credentialism refers to the over emphasis on educational qualifications that is degrees certificates etc as a way to measure ability and merit which sociology expanded on marx ideas by including status and political power in the analysis of social conflict which sociologist Social a, a sociology expert he expanded on Marx's ideas by including status and political power in the analysis of social conflict. Max Weber, Talcott Parsons, Pierre Bourdieu, or uh, Wright Mills. That is the uh, answer is uh, Max Weber. Max Weber added the dimensions of status and political power to Marx's focus on economic inequality. providing a broader understanding of social conflict <clears throat> according to the conflict theory how do schools reinforce gender inequality according to the conflict theory in sociology how do schools reinforce gender inequality by promoting gender neutral education by challenging traditional gender roles by reinforcing traditional gender roles and expectations by offering equal opportunities for all genders so uh, how do schools reinforce gender inequality by reinforce enforcing traditional gender roles and expectations modern roles are very different and there is no difference between uh, you know uh, men and women regarding works you know jobs or skills or anything no women are also equally skilled in so many areas uh, but the traditional gender roles are different you know they are supposed to be obedient subservient, subservient slaves always uh, you know uh, obedient to the husbands or men in general so that is the idea of traditional gender role so this is what uh, you know uh, the schools should do according to conflict theory you know Uh, by reinforcing traditional gender roles and expectations according to conflict theory conflict theory is argued that schools socialize boys and girls into traditional gender roles contributing to gender inequality in society <coughs> which of the following best describes how conflict theory views the educational role in society which of the following best to describe how conflict theory views education education's role in society education creates a social mobility for all education helps maintain and reproduce social inequalities education promotes social integration and harmony education is irre is irrelevant education is irrelevant to social class and reproduction so what is the correct answer which best describe how conflict theory views education as role in society that is education helps maintain and reproduce social inequality it maintains the status quo the evil system no evil things are existing no and that education helps the according to conflict theory conflict theory is believe that education reinforces existing social inequalities making it difficult for disadvantaged groups to achieve upward mobility how do conflict theorists argue about the curriculum in schools it fosters independent thinking it reflects the culture of the dominant group it encourages equal representation of all cultures it ignores social hierarchies so what is the correct answer how do conflict theorists argue about the curriculum in schools it reflects the culture of the dominant group This is how the school functions according to uh, conflict theory. The curriculum in schools is often centered on the values and norms of the dominant group, which marginalizes minority cultures and reinforces social inequalities. What is the primary focus of conflict theory in the sociology of education? 
equal access to education for all, power, control and inequality in education, the psychological development of students and the role of technology in education. What is the primary focus of conflict theory in the sociology of education? Power, control and inequality in education. Conflict theory focuses on how education perpetuates power dynamics and social inequalities through control and unequal distribution of resources. Who introduced the concept of cultural capital? Marx Weber, Karl Marx, Pierre Bourdieu, Michael or Michael Foucault. That is Pierre Bourdieu. Pierre Bourdieu introduced the concept of cultural capital which refers to non-financial social assets that contribute to social mobility. According to the conflict theory, what is the relationship between education and social class? According to conflict theory, what is the relationship between education and social class? Education is a great equalizer. Education maintains and reproduces social class divisions. Education reduces social inequality. Education also benefits the lower classes. So what is the correct answer? According to conflict theory, what is the relationship between education and social class? Education maintains and reproduces social class divisions. Conflict theorists argue that education perpetuates class divisions by providing different levels of quality and opportunity to different social classes. Which of the following is an example of the hidden culture? Lessons on historical events, teaching students to compete with each other, promoting equal opportunities for all, offering extracurricular activities. Which of the following is an example of hidden curriculum? That is, teaching students to compete with each other. You know, that fall, uh, you know, that uh, spoils their creativity, etc. And there is a rivalry in there. Uh, by no? that's the idea. So that is what uh, you know. Uh, you know the hidden curriculum does. It is an evil actually. Teaching students to compete with each other. The hidden curriculum refers to the unspoken social lessons taught in schools, such as competition, conformity, and obedience, which reinforce social structures. <coughs> what do conflict uh, theorists, conflict theorists believe? about meritocracy in education. <coughs> what do conflict theorists believe about meritocracy in education? It is a fast system that rewards effort. It is an illusion that hides the structural inequalities. It promotes equal chances for success. It helps disadvantaged students to succeed. It is an illusion that hides the structural inequalities. It is an illusion that hides structural inequalities. Conflict theorists argue that meritocracy is a myth as success in education is often determined by social background rather than individual effort. How do conflict theorists view standardized testing? How do conflict theorists view standardized testing as a fair measure of student ability? Standardized testing means that the testing is given to all the students irrespective of their intelligence or dullness or this thing. Simply given to everyone and then they are measured according to the scores. No? That is why the um, disadvantaged schools, uh, disadvantaged students uh, measurably fail because the standard testing will not be helpful to them. Uh, because uh, they are not having equal uh, uh, access to resources and so naturally they fall short from the expectations of the standardized testing. That is the idea given. How do conflict theorists review standardized testing as a fair measure of student ability, as a tool that promotes equality, as a means of reinforcing social inequality, as a neutral academic tool? It is as a means of reinforcing social inequality. Conflict theorists see standardized tests as a reinforcing social inequality by favoring students from privileged backgrounds who are better prepared for such exams. Conflict theory criticizes schools for what? Encouraging upward mobility for all students, enforcing discipline to help students succeed, 
promoting inequality and maintaining the status quo, preparing students for democratic citizenship. Conflict theory criticizes schools for what? Promoting inequality and maintaining the status quo. Conflict theory critiques students, uh, critiques schools for maintaining existing power structures and inequalities rather than offering equal opportunities. Which of the following is a criticism of conflict theory in education? It overemphasizes social inequality. It underestimates, underestimates the role of hidden curriculum. It ignores the effects of race and gender. It advocates for elitist education. So, uh, which of the following is a criticism of conflict theory in education? That is, it overemphasizes social inequality. A common criticism of conflict theory is that it focuses too much on inequality and neglects instances where education can lead to social mobility. <coughs> there is a common criticism of conflict theory. Which philosopher's ideas of power and surveillance relate to conflict theory's view of education? <coughs> Michael Foucault, John Dewey, Noam Komsky, uh, Karl Marx. Which philosopher's ideas of power and surveillance relate to conflict theory's view of education? That is, Michael Foucault. Michael Foucault's ideas on power and surveillance aligned with the conflict theory's emphasis on how educational institutions control and discipline students. What is one goal of educational reform according to the conflict theory? Reinforce the traditional values, reduce the disparities and promote equality, increase the standardized testing, focus only on academic achievement. Which is one goal of educational reform according to conflict theory among the four? That is uh, reducing uh, disparities and promoting equality. That is uh, uh, one goal of educational reform. Conflict theory suggests that the reform should aim at, uh, aim at, aim to reduce educational disparities, provide equal resources, and promote social justice. In which way can schools be sites of resistance according to conflict theory? by enforcing traditional social roles, by empowering students to challenge inequalities, by maintaining discipline and control, by focusing on individual achievement. So, what is the question? In what way can schools be sites of resistance, according to conflict theory, by empowering students to challenge inequalities? Conflict theory is belief schools can also be spaces where individuals resist social hierarchies and work toward more equitable outcomes. Thank you very much dear friends. God bless you abundantly. Let us meet in other video lectures. Kindly, kindly subscribe. Okay, subscribe videos and uh, you know, uh, strike the, you know, press the like button etc. These are all uh, uh, for social proofs. So that my videos are valid and more people are watching this. Uh, idea. So if you feel that my videos are valuable for you, kindly do so. Kindly subscribe, like and comment. <coughs> Whatever you want to do, do. Your suggestions you give. God bless you abundantly. Thank you very much. Let us meet in other video lectures.